I would not be in Syria unless Congress makes a declaration of war. We will not stay in Afghanistan if I'm elected president unless Congress makes a declaration of war. Only by going through that constitutional process will, can we ensure that the will of the American people is addressed when we have issues like Syria, okay. Afghanistan, and Iran. Is there any other, now this has to be rebuttal. If you, if you, you want to rebut something, Gary? Well, okay. Please. <laughs> it's a rebuttal question. I was opposed to going into Iraq before we went into Iraq. Um, I did not think there were weapons of mass destruction, and I said in 2003, if there are weapons of mass destruction, we have the military surveillance capability to see that happen, and if that happens, uh, we have all sorts of options. But if we go into uh, Iraq, we're going to find ourselves in a civil war uh, to which there would be no end. Afghanistan, I thought initially that that was totally warranted. We were attacked, we attacked back, but I would argue that after having been in Afghanistan for six months, we wiped out Al-Qaeda. That was 11 years ago. We should have gotten out of Afghanistan 11 years ago. So here we are now on Iran, the largest demonstration in the world in support of the United States after 9-11 was in Iran by over one million citizens that showed up in support of the United States. And we're going to bomb Iran. Iran, we're going to bomb the citizens of Iran. We're going to find okay. ourselves with another 100 million enemies to this country that we right. wouldn't otherwise okay. have. Uh, I'm, uh, I think both candidates said they would not bomb Iran, though. Just be, but I, I would like the questions to be rebuttal so we can move along. This is our fourth question. The economy is the topic for this fourth debate question. The question was submitted by Nico Torino via tout. Since this was done via tout, let's go to his question on the video. Some estimates give a college education in the year 2030 a price tag of nearly $400,000. Is college really worth it at that point? And if so, how do we provide that opportunity to everyone? So the question, if you didn't hear it, was some estimates give the pricing of college education in the year 2030 at maybe $400,000. I don't know if that's correct, but... His question was, is college even worth it at that point? If so, how would you provide the opportunity of college for everyone? And this question should begin with Governor Johnson. Well, first of all, uh, as governor of New Mexico, we established lottery scholarships, which allowed really any uh, graduating high school student from New Mexico to go to college with those costs paid. So what's the federal role, though, when it comes to education? And what's the primary reason in this country why college tuition is so high? Well, it's because of guaranteed government student loans, that because of guaranteed government student loans, no one has the excuse for not going to education. And so because of that, institutions of higher learning, colleges and universities, are immune from pricing that if kids would take a harder look at it, gee, I don't think I can afford $15,000 a semester. I think I'll just sit this one out. When that happens in mass, I guarantee you the cost of college tuition will drop dramatically. But today, that's, that, that is a situation that doesn't exist. I can't afford $15,000, and yet friends and family will point and say, look, you can get a guaranteed government student loan. That is another one of government's unintended consequences that have college tuition at such a high rate. Jill Stein, Jill. So uh, I, I think it's time to make public higher education free as it should be. We've done this before. When our troops came home from the Second World War, we provided free higher education uh, through the GI Bill. And we know that it pays for itself. For every dollar that we invested as taxpayers, seven dollars was returned in benefits to the economy, including more than enough revenue to cover the full cost of those tuition payments. This is something throughout the 20th century, 
Throughout the 20th century, we provided a high school education for free to our younger generation. Why? Because it was essential for economic security. And we owe it to our younger generation to give them a secure start into their economic lives. But in the 21st century, a high school degree won't cut it. You need a college degree in order to have economic security. So it's only right that we should now be providing that for free. And while we're at it, and while we're at it, it's time to, instead of bail out Wall Street for the fourth time, which is what the Fed is doing right now with QE3, $40 billion a month to bail out Wall Street banks again, Instead, let's bail out the students and do something really useful with that bailout. Okay, time's up. On the question of college, uh, Rocky. Well, thank you. Our forebears had the wisdom to set up a system where everyone in this country would have a free secondary education. And that may have been enough then, but for our nation to regain its global competitive edge we must provide higher education, either a college education or technical education, but it's for the future of our country and to meet the ideal in this nation of equality, of opportunity, that we should provide a free and equal educational opportunity in colleges, in technical schools, and do the right thing for the future of our country and for our young people. This is not a radical idea. It's done in many parts of the world, and it pays off huge dividends. As to those students who are saddled with this enormous tuition debt now, it's reached over a trillion dollars, more than the entire credit card debt in this country. And what did Congress do for their fat cat contributors? They made student debt non-dischargeable in bankruptcy. So you can go charge a Maserati on your credit card and, and write that off in bankruptcy, but somebody that went out and did what they could to get a decent education can't get a new start. So we need to demand of Congress allow the dischargeability and bankruptcy of student debt now. Thank you. Uh, Virgil, Virgil Good on college. You might not get what you want to hear from me, but you're going to get straight talk. We can't afford more federally subsidized student loans, and we can't afford more Pell Grants. I wish I could stand here and tell you, yes, we can give you more. No one's going to have to pay for it. Our debt of $16 trillion is bearing down on us, and as Governor Johnson said, we could well be like Germany after World War I. I do not support, and the person that uh, asked the question on the internet is not going to like it, but we can't afford more Pell Grants and more federally subsidized student loans, certainly not at this time. We've got to balance the budget and decline the debt. All right, now, anybody have a rebuttal? Rebuttal. Rebuttal, rebuttal. Governor. Free comes with a cost. Free. <laughs> free, very simply, is spending more money than what you take in. Free is simply accumulating more to the $16 trillion in debt that we currently have. Free is gotten us to the point where we are going to experience a monetary collapse in this country due to the fact that we continue to borrow and print more money than, than we take in. We're printing and borrowing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar we spend. Free, the Federal Reserve System in this country. The, the uh, Treasury prints money. They give it to the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve gives the money to the banks at 0%. Do they give it to you or I? No, they buy up treasuries in a closed loop, making profits off of you and I with no risk whatsoever. This is what has to stop in this country, is the notion of free. There needs to be a level playing field for everybody. Any other rebuttals? Yes. Rocky. I so disagree 
with both Gary Johnson and Virgil Good on this. We cannot afford not to provide a great education and equality of opportunity for all of our young people in this country. We need to insist on prosperity, not austerity. And in a recession, it's not time for these massive spending cuts as called for by Bull Simpson and by both of these people running for president with the major parties. We need to get behind our workers and our young people and provide what's going to build this nation in the future. Great jobs and a great first Jill. class education. Jill and Ben Burton. Jill, rebuttal, Jill. Uh, I'm agreeing uh, with Rocky here that we cannot afford not to educate our students. Our younger generation is the greatest resource we have, and their participation in our economy is not just good for them, it's good for all of us. Every generation, the economy needs to be rebooted by fresh imagination and by the fresh genius of a new generation. That doesn't happen when a generation is locked into being indentured servants. That's what our students are now. We need to bail them out and create free public higher okay. education. Virgil, rebuttal. Simply point out, both Barack Obama and Mitt Romney in the last debate, Romney said, I'm for expanding uh, student loans and Pell Grants. You've got four candidates you can look to if that's your big <laughs> issue. <laughs> All right, the fifth question for tonight's debate centers on civil rights. Like the previous questions, it was submitted via social media and is being presented exactly as sent to us. The question comes from Melissa Farley on Twitter. This is the, for the candidates, and this go-round will begin back with Jill. Where do you stand on NDAA Section 1021? the ability to detain Americans indefinitely. Where do you stand on that and why? Jill. It's an outrage that 1021 NDAA was ever passed to start with. It's an incredible betrayal of our civil liberties that the president has assumed dictatorial rights to put us in prison at his pleasure without charge or without trial. This is unallowable and is a basic offense against the very foundation of American liberty. And it should be repealed. And while we're at it, we must also repeal the, uh, the, the president's interpretation of the, uh, of the Enforcement Act in 2001, the Military Use Act, that said that assassinations are in the power of this president. We need to put an end to assassinations. We need to put an end to the FISA Act, which retroactively legalized unwarranted wiretapping against U.S. citizens. We need to repeal the Patriot Act, and we, need, and we need to stop the persecution of whistleblowers who blow the whistle on crimes by our government. Ten seconds, Jill. Ten seconds. As Benjamin Franklin said, if we sacrifice our liberty for security, we will wind up losing both. So let's take back our liberty. That is the foundation of true security. Rocky, the question of detaining Americans indefinitely. Well, I went to law school because I believed uh, as deeply as one can believe in the rule of law, in justice, in the fact that our system of justice can provide uh, for everyone. And what we have seen with, through the Bush years and now with President Obama has been so absolutely subversive and anti-American. There's been no 
more anti-American act, I think, in our history than the NDAA. And President Obama, don't be fooled about this, in 2000...